Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Good evening. Good evening in Christ New Hope Ministry. Welcome to our evening Bible class. Uh, first of all, we'd like to thank God for this is the day that God has made and will continue to rejoice and be glad in this day. This day has been and will continue to be the best day of our lives because Jesus, which is called the Christ, lived big in us today. I'd like to thank uh, God as we celebrate Veterans Day on today and thank all of our veterans, those men and women who have served. So we will continue to release the blessings of God upon your life in Jesus' name. Well, let's get into the Word of God. Amen. I'm going to be talking tonight about from John chapter 14 and a very familiar scripture because with this particular scripture, usually, usually always read at a funeral setting most, 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 most of the time, so to speak. But uh, I want to deal with a few things tonight, but I want to title this message tonight, The Road. Now, from, uh, I think from the New Living Translation, it talks about Jesus being the, the way, the truth, and the life. And then, of course, Jesus at the same time is going to introduce the Holy Spirit. But I, I want to kind of set the scene a little bit. So if we go back, if, we read, if we're looking at chapter 14, we'll look at chapter 14, verses 1 through 18 from the Amplified. Those are the verses that I'm shooting for that I'll get finished with. But if we, if we go back to chapter 13, just a quick review you'll see three things happen in chapter 13 of the book of John. You see where Jesus washed the disciples' feet. Remember that? And then also you'll see where Jesus told them that Judas would be, would be the one that would portray them. Well, he said one would be the one that would portray them, in which it would be Judas. And then we see how the apostle Peter was, Jesus told him that he would deny him. So those things he, he, he shared the, those things with those disciples in, of course, chapter 14, verse 1. The first thing that comes out of Jesus' mouth, he said, let not your heart be troubled. But from the Message Bible of chapter 14, um, it says, don't let, this, what, don't let this throw you. I like that. Don't let this throw you. In other words, what his disciples had heard about him, of course, washing their feet, about the denial, about... Peter denial and then about who would betray him and so from the Amplified he makes this statement uh, well let me say it from the King James the King James just said uh, that it says let not your heart be troubled and all of us know that part of the King James version but um, now I want to read this same scripture from the mirror Bible of, of John chapter 14 verse um, 1 it says this from the mirror Bible. I thought it's pretty interesting. It says, um, set your troubled heart at ease by letting your belief conclude in God. I like that. It says, set your troubled heart at ease by letting your belief conclude in God as you rest your confidence in me. I like that. Man, that's powerful. Think about this. He says, let your troubled heart, hearts at ease. How? By letting your belief conclude in God as you rest your confidence in me. Amen? Now, that's something you have to kind of ponder a little bit, but, but I thought that was pretty good. So, from the Amplified, it says it like this. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And of course, as I said earlier, our hearts could be troubled because of the conditions of this world. COVID-19, um, we just got done with the presidency and, 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 and the uh, current president is not ready to just release everything at this particular time. So, you know, people's hearts could be trouble just concerning the situation but here again one of the things that you have to understand is that understand if you have received Jesus as your personal savior and confess him as the Lord of your life I'm here to tell you that we are in the kingdom of God's dear son right now so as a result of us being in the kingdom of God's dear son right now I want to say to you what the word of God says here in verse 1 uh, do not let your hearts be troubled Amen? So he says, do not let your hearts be troubled. 
Don't let your heart be distressed. Don't let your hearts be agitated. Then he says, you believe in and adhere to and trust in and rely on God. Jesus said, believe in, adhere to, and trust in, and rely also on me. So in this situation where we are right now, in, with this season of COVID-19, in this season of seeing like there's no rest, but understand we are, we are in this world, but we're not of this world. And so we're in the kingdom of God's dear son, and God is going to always take care of his children. Amen? But that's, what, that's why we have to do what this verse here says in verse 1. He said, do not let your heart be troubled. So again, I say to you, if your heart is troubled in this season right now, it's because you are allowing your heart to be troubled. And so I'm putting the response, or God is putting the responsibility back on us. He's telling me tonight, he's saying, Roger, do not let your heart be troubled. Roger, don't let your heart be distressed. Don't let your heart be agitated. And then he says this. He said, Roger, you believe in, you adhere to, you trust in, and you rely on God. So then he says, believe in, Roger, adhere to, Roger, trust in, and rely also on me. In other words, the Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, just like I have faith in God, and that's what he was telling. See, in other words, they couldn't see God, right? But Jesus was telling them, I, because he said, I know you, you believe in, I know you adhere to, I know you trust in, I know you rely on God, and you haven't even seen him. That's what God was saying to, uh, that's what Jesus was saying to the disciple. He said, now at this time, because I'm getting ready to go away, and so I want you to uh, believe in, I want you to adhere to, I want you to trust in and rely also on me the same way you do God. Now, as I was saying, saying earlier, it seemed like in this situation, Jesus has put himself on an equality with God. Because he said, just like you adhere to, just like you believe in, just like you trust in, just like you rely on God, I want you to do the same thing with me. Amen? So even in this, in this situation now, let's, let's do that tonight. In regards to what's going on, the challenges you may be facing, I want you to believe in. You've been believing in them, you know, before COVID even hit, right? <laughs> before the presidency ever came forth, right? So, so if that's true, continue to believe in. Continue to adhere to. Continue to trust in and rely on. On God and, in, in, and also in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so then in verse 2, Jesus makes his declaration. He says, in my father's house, Roger, there are many dwelling places. There are many homes. Many homes. And this is the thing. When God released you into this earth realm, you became a potential home, a potential dwelling place of the father and Jesus. But again, I believe that Jesus is heading to a place because think about what he's doing. He's already brought in the Father. And, 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 and in other words, he said, let not your heart be, be troubled. You believe in God. So he's brought in the Father. Then, then he said, what? Also believe in me. Now also down the road here, you're going to see where he, start, where he implements the person of the Holy Spirit. So now you have the whole Godhead. You have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And, and I'm here to tell you that they are one. They're, they're one. So he says, in my Father's house, in verse 2, there are many dwelling, dwelling places, many homes. If it were not so, I would, I would have told you for or because I'm going away to prepare a place for you. So, in the, so he's, he's telling them this. He's, 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 he's in this, this um, conversational prayer with them, so to speak. He's steady dropping different nuggets to them, but, but at the same time, guess what? He's headed to the cross. He, he's headed to the cross. So now he says, um, and again, in verse 3, he says, and, um, and if I go and make ready a place for you, he says, I will come back, Roger, again, and I will take you to myself so that where I am, you may be also. Now, I like to say this here at this particular verse when he said, for where I am, there you may be also. So we have to ask the question. See, because a lot of times people think, well, well, where I am, he's talking about Jesus being in heaven. No, what he's talking about in this particular situation, because he mentioned it first, he mentioned the Father. 
So when he makes this declaration in, in verse 3, he says, and if I go and make ready a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself so that or that where I am, you may be also. Well, now again, let's ask the question, where was Jesus at? I submit unto you, he was in a relationship with the Father. Because again, he, he's going to be pulling this whole thing together because he's going to, he already introduced the Father as you, you, you believe in God, believe also in me. Now, later on, he's going to bring in the person of the Holy Spirit. And he's, his objective is to show you that they're one. Amen? Now, I want to get way ahead of myself, but, but you, you're going to see down the road is that he's, he's, going to, he's going to bring us into the whole thing. And so now we can have total confidence in God and with what God is doing in and through our life. Amen? So again, verse 3. Let's look at verse 3 again. It says, and when, if Jesus said, and, and when or if I go and make ready a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself that where I am you may be also, verse 4, and to the place where I'm going. You know the way. That's why we were talking about the road, okay? The road tonight. And in other words, Jesus was telling his disciples, you, you know the road. Amen? And this is going to be, it's amazing because you have to read it from the, from the message Bible because he's going to say, I'm the road. Okay? So in ver again, in verse 4, he says, and to the place where I am going, you know the way. Verse 5, Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. He says, so how can we know the way? We don't know where you're going. Okay? So how can we know the way? Verse 6. Jesus said to him, I am the way. I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except by or through me. Now, see, that, that's, now we, we, because we've been studying this, so you already know that, with, that when Jesus said, no one uh, goes to the Father except by or through me. So we already know that Jesus is the mediator. So in order for us to, to, to get to the Father, we're, we're going to have to go through the Lord Jesus Christ. So he is the way, he is the truth, he is the life. Amen? So now in verse 7, he says, um, if you had known me, talking to Philip, those guys, then he says, if you had known me, then in parentheses it has this, had learned to recognize me. Mm, this would tell me then, um, I know I have received Jesus as my personal savior and confess him as Lord, but do I really know him? Do I, do I value everything in which he's done? Because he's already said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. So have I really valued that? Because in verse 7, again, uh, here Jesus said, he said, if you had known me, because he had already just told uh, Philip here in verse, in verse 6, he said, listen, he said, uh, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man gets to the Father except, except by me. So now in verse 7, he said, if you had known me, Philip, in other words, then he said, if you had learned to recognize me, have you really recognized Jesus on this evening as being the way, the truth, and the life? So he said, if you had known me, had, had learned to, oh, so we have to learn to recognize him. Learn, that, that's a process. That means I'm going to have to be, what, spending some time with him. So he said, if you had known me, had learned to recognize me, you would, watch this, you would also have known my father. See, because now, again, he's putting them on an equality. You know, Peter says, show up, you, you know, so, so watch what he said. He said, if you had known me, Philip, if you had learned to rec recognize me, Philip, you would also have known my father, recognized my father. He says, from now on, Philip, you know him, my father, and have seen him. Wait, I know Philip is like, what do you mean? If I had, if I would have, she says she can. Okay, if you had known me, had learned to recognize me, you would have also known my father. From now on, you know him and have seen him. Verse 8. 
Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father. Then it says this, cause us to see the Father. That is all we ask. Then, then we shall be satisfied. So, Peter, so, so Philip said, the only thing that, that I want you to do, show us the Father. If you show us the Father, we will be satisfied. Verse 9, Jesus replied, have I been with you or have I been with all of you for so long a time and you do not recognize and know me yet, Philip? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. Man, that is a powerful verse. Jesus, again, he, he's, he's, he's equating himself, putting himself on an equality with the Father. Now think about this. And, and, and the Father is not, and God is not getting upset about that. God is not tripping about that. So, in, in other words, Jesus so identified himself with the Father. In other words, Jesus is saying, if the Father had came down here in the flesh, the Father would be doing the, exactly the same thing that I've been doing. I've been healing the sick, feeding, feeding, feeding folk, raising the dead. God would have been doing the same thing. Okay? Because he said they're one. Okay? Now look at, uh, again, let's look at verse 9. Jesus replied, have I been with all of you for so long a time and you do not recognize and know me yet, Philip? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say then, show us the Father? Verse 10, do you not believe, oh, this is so important. Do you not believe, Philip, that I am in the Father? And that the Father, Philip, is in me. He said, what I am telling you, I do not say on my own authority. In other words, when I just, in other words, Jesus saying, Philip, what I just said to you about that I am, believe me, do you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? He said, he said, he's made this statement to him. He said, Philip, what I am telling you, I do not say this on my own authority. Okay? Of my own accord. But he said, he said, but the Father who lives, oh, watch this, who lives continuously in me does his work. So it would, this is what it looked like to me, and I could be wrong, but, but it, it looks like the Father God is living his will through Jesus. Now, I wonder if that's what God want us to do concerning the Lord Jesus Christ. I wonder if Jesus wants to live his life through us. I wonder if there's any connection when the Bible says, Jesus said, I'm going to tell you why the thief came and then I'm going to tell you why I came. I came that you might have my life and that you might have my life more abundantly. So here, Jesus is talking about the Father living his life, think about this, through him. And then Jesus told us that, that I came that you might have my life. He just don't want us to have his life. Okay, yep, that's the life of Jesus right over there. Yep, praise the Lord, Lord glory to God. I'll bring somebody in. Yep, yep, that's the life of Jesus. No, no, no. He wants to live his life through us. Okay? Now, now, now again, verse 10, this is so important. Jesus said, he said, do not, he said, do you, do you not believe that I am, again, where? I'm in the Father, Philip, and that the Father is in me, Philip. He said, what I am telling you, I do not say. In other words, the statement that I just made, Philip, I do not say this on my own authority. Are, are you here this evening? I, I don't say this on my own authority. He says, and of my own accord. Well, what are you saying, Jesus? But the Father, Philip, who lives continuously in me. Father, I thank you tonight through the person of the Holy Spirit. You are continuously living through us. And Father, we give you the praise, the glory, and all the honor. So watch this. So again, he said, do, do you not believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? What I am telling you, Philip, I do not say on my own authority. 
and of my own accord, but the Father who lives continuously, Philip, in me does his work. Then, oh, watch this. He does his work, his own miracles, his own deeds of power. In other words, he said, Jesus said, listen, none of this stuff is of me. This, all these things that you see me doing, these are the works of the Father. I'm only doing what I hear the Father say. Look at verse 11. He says, he's still talking to Philip and the, and the disciples, and I'm talking to you tonight, glory to God, uh, in Christ's new ministry. He said, believe me that I am in the Father. This is what I, I want you, he said, believe me that I am in the Father, Philip, and Philip, believe that the Father is in me, or else, Philip, believe me for for, for the sake of the very works themselves. Amen? He said, if you cannot trust me, Philip, at least let these works that I do in my Father's name convince you. Amen? Now remember in the beginning, what, 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 what did he say? He said, let not your heart be troubled, right? He said, you believe, you believe in God, believe also in me. In other words, you adhere to, you believe in God, you adhere to God, you trust in God, you rely on God. Uh, Jesus said, uh, be believe in, adhere to, trust in, rely also on me. And so you, you see it here, here in, in, this, in this particular verse. Now, um, that verse is powerful. So, so let's go back to verse 11 again. Jesus said, believe me, Philip, that I am where I'm in the Father, and believe me, Philip, this is what Jesus is saying, that the Father is where? In me. That, was, that, was, that would tell me that's a oneness. He said, or else believe me for the sake of the very works themselves. He says to Philip again, he said, Philip, if you cannot trust me, Philip, at least let these works that I do in my Father's name Oh, so God gave him his name. God gave Jesus his name. In other words, Jesus said, I'm, I'm only doing, I'm, I'm using the Father's name. Okay? He said, he said uh, at least let these works I do in my Father's name convince you. Verse 12. I assure you, Philip, most solemnly I tell you, if anyone steadfastly believes in me, he will himself be able to do the things I do. And he will do even greater things than these. Why do you say that, Jesus? Because I go where? To the Father. Watch this. And then he said in verse, verse, verse 13, now this is powerful. And I, he said, and I will do, I myself will grant, Jesus said, Whatever you ask, now that word ask there is the word demand. But again, he's talking about works, but you're not demanding anything from the Father God. You are demanding, really, now he's getting into the works. Because think about it, because he was just talking about earlier about the miracles. He said, he said believe for the works sake, the miracle, those things you, you saw. He said, in other words, you, Jesus said, these are, these are things that I, that I did, and if I did those things in my Father's name, I'm going to give you the privilege of having my name, and you'll be able to do the same thing. We'll be able to get the, we'll get, be able to get the same result. So again, let's look at verse um, 13. He said, and, and, and I will do, I myself will grant whatever you ask in my name. <clears throat> then it says, as presenting, oh, this is the part, as presenting all that I am so that the Father may be glorified and extolled through the Son. Now think about this for a minute. When he, when he looks at this, when you see this verse again, he says, and I will do, I will what? Jesus said, I will do, I myself will grant. And then he said, then he tells us what he'll, he'll grant. Whatever you ask, whatever you demand in my what? So it's not about just the name of Jesus. It's not just the name. I mean, that's, that's, that's a tag. No, no, no. See, when you start, but notice what he says in this particular verse. He said in verse 13, he said, and I will, he said, and I will do, I myself will grant whatever you ask or demand in my name 
then he says this, as presenting all that I am. In other words, when you think about the name of Jesus, what type of value, what type of weight do you, do you attach to it? Is it just a name? Oh, pretty Jesus. No, no, no. there's a weightiness of that name. In other words, when we, when we, when we say, Abba, Father, which are in, in heaven, man, I'm thinking about what is it that God is not God over? So when he says here, and I will do, Jesus said, I will do, Roger, I will grant whatever you ask in my name. Then it says, as presenting all that I am, so that the Father may be glorified in a stove through the Son. Then he says, yes, he said, I will grant, I myself will do for you whatever you ask or demand in my name as presenting all that I am. In, in other words, you, the more you, when you say the name of Jesus, there, there's something, there's something else that, I mean, there's, there's character, there's integrity, there's, there's healing power, there's soundness, there's soundness of mind. All these things are wrapped up into. So when you, you, you release that name out of your mouth, you release it with boldness and confidence, knowing that that word that, that you're releasing out of your mouth will not return unto God void. So verse 15 says, um, again, verse, verse 14, I'm sorry. He said, yes, I will grant, I myself will do whatever, do for you whatever you shall ask in my name. But then he says it again, as presenting all that I am. So when I, when I, again, when I release the name, I have to know that there's something in back of that name. See, all of heaven is in back of that name. That's why he's our surety. That's why he stands in back of every word that, that is released out of the new covenant. Amen? Verse, verse 15, let me, let's wrap this up. He said, if you, if you really love me, Jesus said, you will keep, obey my commands. Verse 16, he said, and I will ask. In other words, if you, if you obey me, he said, and I will ask the Father, watch this, and he will give you another, watch this, comforter. Oh, now, not only are we dealing with the Father, Son now, now there's another added here. There's a, another added value. What's the add, added value? Man, now we have the whole Godhead involved in us. Come on, y'all, we can't, we can't. Fail. Amen. The only way, the only way, way that we fail is that we, we, we refuse to get on the road that we're talking about. Okay? So he says here in verse 16, he said, and I will, and I will ask, in other words, if you obey me, you'll, you'll, you'll keep my command. But verse 16 says, and I will ask the Father. Jesus is speaking. He's the head of the new creation. And he said, I'll ask the Father. I, I submit unto you in Christ. If, if Jesus said he's going to ask the Father, I believe that the Father will do whatever Jesus asks him to do. Okay, so watch what he said. He said, and I will ask the Father, and he, talking about the Father, will give you another, watch this, comforter, will give you another counselor, will give you another helper, will give you another intercessor, will give you another advocate, will give you another strengthener, will give you another standby, watch this, that he may remain with you forever. I'm, I'm here to tell you that all those things that, that Jesus said that the Holy Spirit is, I submit unto you, he must have been that to them when he, when he was doing what he was doing in the Father's name. Amen? Verse 17. He said, he, then he tells us who this, who this counselor, this helper, this intercessor, this advocate, this strengthener, this standby that was going to be with us or remain with, with them forever. He calls them, verse 17, he calls them the spirit of truth. The spirit of what? Then it says, whom the world cannot receive. Then he says, the world can't welcome him. The world can't take to, take to, to its heart. Talking about the spirit of truth. Because it, talking about the world, does not see him, the spirit of truth, or know him, or recognize him. But then he says, but you know and recognize him. Talking about the person of the Holy Spirit. He said, for he lives with you constantly. <laughs> he lives with you constantly and will be where? 
in you. Last verse, he said, I will not leave you as orphans. I will not leave you as orphans. And then he tells us exactly what an orphan is. In other words, he said, I will not leave you as orphan. I won't leave you comfortless. I won't leave you desolate. I won't leave you bereaved. I won't leave you for long. I won't leave you helpless. Jesus said, I will, I'll do what? I'll come back to you. And, and I submit unto you tonight in Christ that God has not left us alone. Now, do you actually think this... COVID-19, this situation that we are in in our world, do you think this, these things really are troubling God? No, no, no. That's why he said to you in the beginning, he said, now this is going to throw you. He said, don't, he said, don't let this throw you. Then he said, don't let your heart be troubled. Well, why, why? So the only way that our heart will not be troubled tonight in Christ, if we, if we stay, if, if we believe in God, Believe in them, adhere to them, trust in them, rely on, and not only God, but do Jesus the same way. Amen? I am out of time. Thank you for your, have an amazing evening.